Okay, we're going to go on and uh, we're going to check and make sure that the, uh, the, the posts are spaced so that the stringer doesn't have problems. The stringer size that they've proposed is a two by six and it's the same material so I just recopied from the last part the stress values and now the stringer is a two by six so you have to go into chapter number four again and go to table four one and look up a two by six it's inch and a half by five and a half Uh, if you keep going across, you'll find it's got a moment of inertia of 20.80 inches to the fourth. If you continue on, you'll find out it has a S of 7.56 inches cubed. Okay. Now, our, uh, our Joyce and Stringers I've got drawn here. Uh, we've got a W to worry about again. Now we're on W3. W2 doesn't have much to do with calculating W3. Okay, W3. Okay, I want the weight on the stringer. So what do I do? I come right through here. Go halfway, halfway. Draw myself a nice little strip. So that stringer is going to carry that weight right there. So it's going to carry a 36 inch wide strip. So my W is 36, change to feet, multiply by the weight that's on it. It's 150 pounds a cubic foot. We figured first thing, three times that, my new W, W3, is 450 pounds per foot. So there's my W. There's all my properties, and there's my stress. So bending, we do the same thing. L equals 10.95 square root of F times S, 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 7.56 divided by the new W3. W3 comes here. Delta, if you look at the problem statement and uh, they used uh, deflection criteria as L over 360 only again. L over 360, that's that one. L equals 1.69, square root of E, million five. I, 20.8 over the W. We're in two by, so that's dimensional again. So the uh, shear is going to be H, inch and a half, five and a half, point uh, nine, four fifty, plus two, five and a half, divided by twelve. Five and one half divided by twelve. That should be exactly the same as they've got in your text or in your handout. So let me go to it. I'm on page 615, going right down the left-hand column. Uh, 13, 750, 650 gives me 51.4. 51.4. Next one looks uh, 1.69 million five, 20.8, looks to be 69 inches. Uh, my r things are running out of juice. Uh, 59, in or what is that, uh, 69 inches. Sixty-nine inches. And the last one, if you look at the numbers, hopefully they're the same. 175. The 8.25 is the one and a half by five and a half. 0.9452, that's perfect. 4.48. Multiply it by 12. 53.8 inches. 
So the farthest I can put the shores apart is going to be just a tad over 50 inches. So I'm going to space them at some spacing, and your book ended up uh, going to what they do. They, they decided that uh, if we did it, 45 inches looked to be a pretty good number. So they changed, for some reason, they changed this to 45 inches. So if I look at this now, my plan, I'm going to put a shore. Start right there. Be a shore on each uh, on each of the. Uh, ooh, got it. I'm going to do it the other way. Got my bearings mixed up. One there, one there, one there, and one there. I'll be holding up the stringers. So the shores are actually coming up underneath the stringers like that. And what I've just figured out is that spacing is 45 inches. So 26 plus 26 is what, 52? So there's going to be one right in here somewhere. Uh, 26 and 26 is 52, and another 26 is 78. So I'm 78 inches here, and another 26 is 107. So I'm going to be 107 inches to here. And 245s is 90, so I'm going to be somewhere right about in here with another shore. So, hopefully you can see these guys are at Okay, now the quest is, if you look at the next step, it says, how much shore load will we have? Okay, you can look at that little doodad they got there. I want to show you how I would do it if it was me. Okay, those are each one of those red dots is a shore. So if you walked underneath this thing, everywhere you see that red dot, you'd see a post going up underneath the stringer. So all we have to do is simple as this. Take a typical inside shore. Go halfway up. Draw a line. Halfway down. Draw a line. Halfway over. Draw a line. Halfway over. Draw a line. There's the area that shore is going to have to carry. How big is that area? Half of 36 plus half of 36. That'll be 36 inches wide. How much this does it have to carry the other way? Half of 45 and half of 45. So how much weight is on it? Uh, there's my, my little rectangle right there. Hopefully you can see it. It's 36 by 45. If it's 36 by 45 and it has 150 pounds a cubic foot on it, uh, square foot, excuse me, what's the load on the support? So the, the, uh, Load transferred to the post or the shore is equal to the area of that little green box, 36 by 45, times the amount of load per square foot, 150 pounds per square foot. We got that, that's W1 in your notes, hopefully you've got that. This is the old W1. Multiply them. Unfortunately, I have inches and inches and pounds per square foot. So I got to do this and this. And when I take 
36 and divide it by 12, I get 3. And when I take 45 and divide it by 12, I get 3.75. So 3 times 3.75 gives me 11 and a quarter. Multiply it by 150 pounds per square foot. Times 150 gives me 1,600. 87.5 pounds going down in each of the shores. So if you look at it, that number is right there in the bottom of page 616, 1688 pounds. Okay, they go through some additional calculations for bearing. Uh, that's very, very, very seldom an issue. Uh, we're not gonna worry about that in this course. So if you look at it, we looked at, first, they gave us the thickness of the sheathing. We found the spacing of the joists. Once we had the spacing of the joists, we could they gave us the size of the joists. We could go and find the spacing of the stringers. Now they gave us the size of the stringers. They're two by sixes, okay? These guys are two by six is given. Now we could go ahead and find out how far apart we can put the shores. And once we got how far apart the shores were, we could draw a little picture knowing where all the members were and draw a little box. And this would be the load on the shore or the post. So we went from sheathing to joist, joist to stringers, stringers to posts, and then the load on the post. So that's it. Uh, there's, uh, hopefully you can go ahead and do this. I'm gonna send you a uh, problem that you can play with a little bit. Uh, it'll be on Canvas, and uh, take a look at it. See if you can get the data. The big thing is populating the equations and knowing which equations to use. So take a look at it, see what you can do, and uh, give me some feedback. And all we've got left now is uh, the last two parts, doing a wall form and then doing the battered struts or the braces. So we'll work on that in the next lesson.